Hi there, it's Calculus by Christy, and now we are going to go through problem number four on both the AP Calculus AB and BC exams from the year 2023. Now, upon the posting of this video, the rubric has not come out yet from College Board, but once it does, I will link it in the description below, so look out for that. And also, if you find this video to be helpful, make sure to subscribe so that you can see other calculus videos as they are posted. Let's look at question number four. So in question number four, we are given the graph of f prime. Now remember that it's not the graph of f or f double prime. It is the graph of f prime. So we are asked if f has a relative minimum, maximum, or neither at x equals six. So taking a look at the graph right here, we can see that yes, f prime is equal to zero, but f prime does not change signs. And in order to be a relative minimum, f prime must change from negative to positive. And in order to be a relative maximum, f prime must change to positive or negative. Since neither of those occurs, f has neither a relative minimum or relative maximum at x equals six. Moving on to part B, we want to know when is the graph of f concave down? f is concave down when f double prime is negative. And because we are given the graph of f prime, we are looking for where f prime is decreasing because that's where f double prime would be negative. I can see that f prime is decreasing from negative two to zero and also four to six. Therefore, that is when f is concave down. Now into part C. We want to find this limit. And so the first thing I like to do is I like to find the limit of the numerator and denominator separately. So first, finding the limit as x approaches two of the numerator. Well, I'm going to use direct substitution to plug in two. And the reason I can for this function is because I can see that the derivative exists for all values of x between negative two and eight. Therefore, f of x is continuous on that interval. And the limit as x approaches two of f of x does equal f of 2. I just want to make that important note. So plugging in 2 into this limit, I can see that the limit is 0. Next, I'm going to plug in the limit into the denominator. So the limit as x approaches 2 of the denominator. Once I plug that in, I also get 0. We've got our typical indeterminate form, 0 divided by 0. And because I get the indeterminate form, I can apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule tells me that I would take the, so this limit right here would be equal to the limit of the derivatives of the numerator over the denominator. So I would take the derivative of the numerator, derivative of the denominator, making sure to not forget this limit notation. And now I'm going to plug in the value of two for x. I can see that the limit is three. If you'd like to watch a video that I've posted in the past on L'Hopital's rule, click here to see that video. Now on to the final part D. We are asked to find the absolute minimum value of F. This is your standard candidates test. To find the candidates, we're going to test critical points and endpoints. That's where absolute extrema occur, only at endpoints or critical points. So we are given the endpoints of negative two and eight, so I made sure to include those in my table. And then I also need to find my critical points. Critical points are where the derivative equals zero. I can see from my graph that f prime equals zero at negative one, two, and at six. But we've already determined in part A that six cannot be a relative min or relative max, and therefore it cannot be an absolute minimum. So I'm not going to include that on my table. Now, I would say the trickiest part of this problem is coming up with the function f of x. So what I had to do in this case is I had to use the initial condition that at an x value of two, f is one. So you'd wanna start at the value of one and then add on the change from the x value of two to your x value of f prime of t dt. So what I did once again, as I tested my endpoints and my critical points that could possibly be the answer, and I'm plugging it into this function here. So I'm taking one and then I'm adding the area under the curve from two to, in this case, negative two, and the area under the f prime curve. So what I did up here, as you can see, I took the area from each region and wrote it in. This one, a little bit tricky to get the area under the curve here. I had to take the rectangle, which had an area of eight, and subtract this semicircle right here, which was pi two squared divided by two. So this shaded area in green is eight minus two pi. I had to use that for uh, 
eight when I plugged it in. So the integral from two to negative two, remember I am working backwards. So even though four words would be negative two, going backwards would be an area of two. So I get three for that one. Then here I would take one plus the integral from two to negative one. So once again, I'm working backwards, so that'd be a positive three. So I get a value of four for f of negative one. Plugging in two, well, that'd be one plus two to two would just be an integral of value of zero. So one plus zero and then eight, I had to take one and then add the area from two to eight. And you can see up here, that would be this area of two plus that value we talked about of eight minus two pi for a value of 11 minus two pi. Now we were looking for the absolute minimum value. Looking at these numbers, I can see the minimum is right here of one and that occurs at X equals two. All right, everyone, that is number four from the AP Calculus AB and BC exams from 2023. If you thought this was helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so that you can see the other five and six so that you are notified when five and six come out from the 2023 AP Calculus exam. All right, everybody, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.